What's up everyone? I hope you're doing good. Today I wanted to show you how I made my latest track figuring and specifically how my workflow helped me take it from a loop and turn it into a full song. Here's the project file and how it sounded with a basic mix and no master. Okay, cool. Let's pause it there. So I started this track with drums, loaded up some one shots, kick, snare, hi-hat, and put them into a drum rack in Ableton Live. Once I had some drums that I liked the sound of, I began playing around with them on Ableton Push and ended up playing this groove. The drums stay pretty much the same for the whole track and I wanted the kick and snare to be really bold for this particular track, be right up front and centre in the mix as well. So let me show you the basic mix chain that I've got going on on the drum bus to help me achieve that sound. So I start off the bus with XLN Audio's DS10. I've got it set to smooth which I find is the most natural sounding out of the different options here. And I've raised the attack by here around 20% and reduce the sustain by about the same 20%. An increase in tack makes the initial transient of all the drum sounds hit a little bit harder and the sustain reduces the tail of each of the drum sounds just a little bit. So it makes it a bit more snappy. I then have a little bit of glue compression going on using Ableton's stock plugin, glue compressor. I'm using this as a parallel compressor dialed in at literally 50%. The threshold here is reduced to the extent that it's engaging the meter to about 5 dB, which to me just sounded good and kind of glued the kick and the snare together as well as the hi-hat. And now I've got two tape plugins. The first is Tube, which is from Good Hertz Audio. They make really great plugins. And this one, I really love the balance between tube and tape sound that it achieves. And I'm hitting it really hard at 100%. And then finally, I'm using Universal Audio's A800, which just has a really nice sound. Just to note on this, I've got the IPS set to 7.5, which rolls off a bit of the high end, giving it a bit more of a subtle effect. The IPS 15 would be more natural sounding, which I also do love the sound of, but for this track, rolled off the highs a little bit. And instead of using an EQ, this plugin really helps to do that in a natural sounding sort of way. Towards the end of the song, you might notice that there's a really subtle shaker sound, which I recorded with a can of dried lentils. I've used Ableton's stock EQ plugin, EQ8, to create a high pass filter to roll off the frequencies below 500 hertz, which really helps it to sit nicely in the mix. I've also used a high shelf filter, boosted around 5 dB from around 4.2 kilohertz which just helps the percussion to shine and cut through the mix really nicely. As you'll hear, it's really quiet in the mix. Then with the rest of the drums, really subtle. Let me show you the chord progression and talk to you a bit about how I came up with it along with the melody. F7 sus4, B flat7 sus4, G7 sus4 to E flat major 7. And then occasionally go into the E major, which leads nicely back to the F7, sus4 in this case. So the root movement is F, B flat, G, E flat, E, occasionally back to F. Mm -hmm. 
When I write ideas on the piano, it's never premeditated. I never sit down and say, today I'm going to play X, Y, Z progression. I'll often spend a lot of time exploring different chords, which I often like to think of as colours, along with melodies, and explore different combinations that sound really nice to me. So to use figuring this track as an example, the melody is centered around the notes G and F, which alone would sound like this. Which on its own doesn't sound great, but there are lots of different chord options that go with these two notes. So let's take F in the top note or melody and F in the root or bass and use the available notes in between these two notes to create different chords. You could play F minor, F major 7, there are so many options here for F and F. F sharp, we could make a F sharp 6 9 chord. G in the bass and F in the top. F is a minor 7, so we could play G minor 7. A flat, we could play an A flat 6 9. A, we could treat the F as a sharp 5, so play A7 sharp 5. B flat, major or minor. B, we could play B7 altered. C, C minor 11. D flat major 7. D minor 7. E major 7. And you get the idea. So we kept F on top the whole time, changed the root notes to create different chords and sounds, each one sounding different, more bright, maybe darker, more tense, or more resolved. So that's how the main theme for figuring was born. And here's how the melody developed whilst keeping the chords the same. I use the same melody chord idea to improvise new sections to help develop tracks and turn them from short loops into full arrangements. In my experience, this helps to create forward motion and make the music more engaging. For this track, I press record and improvise this melodic section on my upright piano, which later functioned as a bridge to the piano solo. Keeping things sparse really helped to engage me as the listener. And there we are into the piano solo. I played bass on the demo, which really just outlined the root notes of the chords that I shared earlier. And then it was further developed by Cartoons, who took that to a whole new level, which to me helped to glue the piano and drums together. So here he starts by outlining the roots and then later on things get a little busier. Lots of nice space here too. And with the drums. The final piece to the puzzle for this track were strings. I played synth strings on the demo for this track, but imagine the potential of bringing the track to life even more by recording and layering the real thing. The string arrangement was developed by Rebecca Reed, who stuck true to the original sound, but took things to the next level by experimenting and developing different layers and using different effects to help bring the track to life.
This track has four distinct layers, drums, piano, bass and strings, and sometimes that's all the music calls for. Sure, I could have filled things out and added more layers, but on this track I really wanted to let the piano breathe, and I really like how the final result ended up sounding. I hope you enjoyed this video. You can stream Figuring now, and it's part of my debut album called Hello World, which is out on July 14th. I would love to hear your thoughts on what you'd like to see or hear more or less of. And if you enjoyed, please subscribe. See you next time.